know, if you folks have watched our videos, and phew, I thank you for watching them. We don't never take that for granted. You've heard us talk about coal placement. It is a very important part in Dutch oven cooking to know how to place and where to place. Isn't that right, my love? That is true. We're cooking with all hardwood, um, hardwood charcoal or real wood. And so um, there's kind of a different method to that. And so we're just going to go through some quick tips and tricks to get you guys, if you're just maybe starting out Dutch and cooking, get you on your way and fire up the oven. And today, folks, we are using a hardwood lump that is cold. That yes. way we can place we're it with kinda, our hands. I'm we're just kinda cheating so we can putting show you these on better. just so I don't get all the black. So you ready me bring you some? Probably the trivet that we use the most often is our tall trivet. Um, this is about five and a half inches high. We recommend no matter where you are, what you're doing, getting some sort of trivet. They sell them online. We sell these kind of horseshoe style on our website. We recommend two different sizes, a tall and a short, and we'll kind of go into that. And there is no knob on a Dutch oven, correct? Nope, can't got one. So the knob equivalent to a Dutch oven is a trivet. This is how you regulate your heat. That and placement. And placement, exactly. So Kent, why don't you go ahead and give us some holes. Biggest mistake we see in Dutch oven cooking at our cooking school and different demos we do around, people want to load up the underside of the Dutch oven and directly under the oven. We don't do that, right? I got a little cold action. Okay. What would you suggest? Well, first I would suggest let's move all these over there out of the way. The number one tip we have for you all when you are Dutch oven cooking with real wood, do not put coals directly under the oven. You want to do a ring around the oven. So we're going to put it here. We've got coals around the ring. Cast is really good about absorbing heat and distributing it evenly. If so, you place it even. Correct. So we just do the ring, it's gonna suck in all that heat and it's gonna circulate it around the oven. You go directly under it, it's way too close. The other tip is, I would say 90% of the time, we do a solid layer of coals right on top because what's the easiest part to cook? The top, you can see. You can see the top. Can... What cases would you use a tall trivet with? Pie, cake, sometime a brownie, sometime something that you wanna bake slow like biscuits, bread pudding i normally don't do a cornbread on it but i have at times the kind of the more moisture you have in a dish the slower you yeah. want to cook it so like cakes for example or let's say it's really windy where you are you need to slow down your heat a little bit pop it off the heat a little bit another way that you can regulate your heat along with using a trivet is where you have your ring all in your oven we've got it pretty close Let's say we were back home and we were cooking with mesquite wood. It's a really hot burning, good coal wood. I might back off, let's bring our circle out just a tad. That's another way where you can dial down that knob a little. It is the knob. It's the knob. Now we're switching to our shorter trivet. Um, this is what we've got. We've got another one anywhere from like two to three and a half inches we use as our, our short trivet. Same principle applies ring around the bottom. I would cook baked potatoes in here. Yep. I would cook a lot of casseroles in there. Something that you can stir or you can check easy. You can cook that way. You can cook meat in there like if you're stewing down some meat to make it tender. Sparkling taters is a great recipe you can put in here. Hominy and green chili casserole right out of the book. Like he said, anything that you can stir because it's not just sitting in there on the bottom. We can kind of regulate the heat by stirring it. But it too can be regulated the same way by moving your coals in or out. Exactly. If you've got just the legs and the, that's the only part of the oven that you're, you're using, one reason we don't like that is because normally people are kind of, you're outdoors, you're in soft ground, so that oven can sink a little bit. That's another reason we like it. Then you get right up on top setting on them coals. So close, yeah. So, but you can also regulate that. Let's bring out our circle really wide. Or smaller coals also. Smaller coals. A big thing, and you'll see people that Dutch oven cook do it all the time, is rotation. Because when you're cooking with hardwood, there's not specific size pieces. You're going to get different clumps of all size. So you always rotate the bottom one way, and you rotate the lid the opposite way. That way you're evening out any hot spots that might be there. What you got going on there? All, this is my hot spot dance. All right, we go. Yeah. Hi, Shan. Hey, Kent. Let's cook a cake. And when we mix this cake up, I like it moist. So let's put like 
a big old dollop of sour cream in there to give it some moisture. Whoa, you like a challenge. I do. Okay, so we've made a cake and we put our circle of coals and we're going along and we've rotated. But let's say as something cooks, we're noticing that, hey, one side is a little bit hotter or this cake is cooking a little more on this side on the bottom, what do we do? Well, we're gonna target some heat. You're going to what? Target our heat. Just like a radar, pull it in on the Ooh. scope and let it happen. So say we need to get it done on this side a little faster. You can't do this with your fingers, but you can do it with a good lid lifter or something like that. Move your heat to wherever you need it focused. And right. that's, top is easy to do. You can do the same thing on the bottom. A lot of times with biscuits, I'll notice the outside of the top gets done last. Yeah. So I'll just move all my coals to the outside ring. A lot of times when I cook a cake, because there's so much moisture in it, the middle ends up being gooey. jiggly. It's jiggly. Jiggly. Yeah, it's, it can be super jiggly. And then people start to panic. And I've been in that situation. You so walk you up to it there and you take the lid off and you give it just a little peck with your lid lifter and you'll see it get the jelly shakes. Yeah. So we're gonna put us a little heat right up here in the middle, but I'm gonna put me some heat right there under the bottom in the middle. So you've got targeted heat on the top, you've got targeted heat on the bottom, and it's gonna just cook that inside that's having a little trouble getting done. Yes, now this can be a slow process. I've seen yes. this take quite a while, but don't rush it. Don't try to get in no hurry and just think, well, I'm going to call it done even though it ain't. You can get that jiggle out of it, top and bottom, and get that cake to set up anywhere you want just by targeting your coal placement. One thing we forgot to mention too, if the wind's blowing, all this is going to come a little more fast and furious. You may have to pull them away, put them back. Wind creates so much more heat on one side of an oven, but you're losing it on the other side. Yeah, you can microwave really fast in, in wind. And in Oklahoma, we got a lot of it. So We get some of this kind of weather. Yeah, also going to want to rotate our oven more frequently. Yes, if the wind is blowing. Um, and I will say, 90% of the time when you are Dutch oven cooking, you're going to cook your dish faster on the bottom than you will on the top. And the yep. reason for that is your your food is right here and you're, you're most in direct line with- Heat rises. Heat. Yep. So what we do is we look for those cues. Let's say I'm, we're baking a cake. It started to pull from the, the outside away from that cast iron. It's setting up. That's when I know we're gonna take it off the bottom heat. Then what we're doing is we're, we've got our top heat still on. And we're just waiting for that top to catch up. Yeah. And you have to remember, even though we took it off the bottom heat, it's still cooking. It is good iron. Because the is circulating that heat. Sometimes things might be cooking a little fast. Let's put it back up here. Have all our coals out here where they was to start with. But the wind is howling about 743 mile an hour. And you need to slow things down. I ain't no sense in getting rid of all this heat. Let's just be very careful so your cake don't fall and let's set it off the heat just a little, let it sort of cool down a minute. We can always go back, but just let it, you may have to let it cool off just a little and bring it back. And Kent always says, you can always add more heat, but you can't take it away after it's already burned. I really like cooking like this when it's not hot. Oh yeah, it's not and you can, you can pick these up. Oh, they don't okay. hurt, you know, they don't make a sweat. But folks, we, we hope you learned something from this. Cold placement is so big in cooking in a Dutch oven yeah. and rotation, Practice, practice, mo practice. It is the best thing in the world. It's it's best if you can just get out there and enjoy it in the backyard. Get the family together. That's what it's all about. And uh, don't be afraid to start. That is yeah. that is the best part of it. Just get started. And uh, we don't take for granted you're here to watch. We appreciate it. Reach up there to that top right, left corner. Well, I don't know which corner it's on. Hit subscribe. We would appreciate it. 